Hello, welcome to the uh, tutorial 5 uh, key points uh, video. In the tutorial we looked at a number of matters. Obviously we looked at uh, TMO03 and I think my main point there was that uh, that type of question requires you to be relentlessly logical. You need to go through the offence as defined in the uh, statute and identify what the actus reus is, what the mens rea is, uh, and whether there are any possible defences. And then on the facts of the question, decide whether all the elements of the actus reus are there, all the elements of the relevant mens rea are there, and whether there are any defences. Um, say, relentlessly logical is the approach uh, needed there. We then went on to review an area that you've just covered, but it's really important that you're in a position to be able to describe and explain these key ideas. So this is almost a revision list. Um, I'm not expecting lots of information, but it would be useful for you to have, even if it's two or three sentences, just the key points on the following topics. So the first, of course, are the institutions of the European Union. And, uh, of course, they're the Commission. The European Council, which often gets referred to as the European Summits on television, where the heads of state or government meet together. The Council of the European Union, which used to be referred to as the Council of Ministers, which has one representative from each member state, but the representative um, covering the uh, subject of the um, particular council meeting. So if it's an education council meeting, it'll be the education minister. If it's uh, uh, ECOFIN, e Economic and Finance, then it will be the relevant uh, finance minister, or in our case, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. The European Parliament, and of course you need to know in some detail the work of the European Court of Justice. Then there's legislation. Make sure that you can define the primary le legislation, the two major treaties uh, that are in existence now, and the secondary, and again these definitions very important, regulations, directives, to a lesser extent decisions. I mean we wouldn't in English law regard that as law, but the treaty says it is, and it's law in the sense that that's, that all of these are binding. Uh, there are also opinions, but uh, we won't describe those as law. The legislative process, again, you don't need it in detail, but you need to know uh, what the terms ordinary legislative procedure is, the assent procedure and the consultation procedure. Court actions are important. Um, the direct actions brought um, by and against other uh, institutions and member states. Uh, a particular importance, of course, the newly numbered Article 258 brought by the Commission. Read that article, make sure you can see what the procedure is. And Article 259, which allows a state who's aggrieved that the Commission hasn't taken action, has given the uh, Commission the opportunity to act, and has failed to do so, and that member state can take action against uh, the state that uh, is being complained about. The reference procedure, sometimes referred to as preliminary rulings, now Article 267. Then enforcing people's individuals' rights. Direct effect, indirect effect, state liability really central that you do this and I've discussed it in previous uh, tutorials and uh, um, I've sent out uh, details of the procedure to go through. Key points to remember, what, wherever the European right uh, arises, whether it be treaties, regulations or directives, then it has to be clear, precise and unconditional. If the rights are risen in a directive, two further things have to be considered. Has the date of implementation been passed? Well, that's straightforward. Is it an emanation of a state? Well, of course, a look at Foster and British Gas is very important. And in your um, materials book, you've got uh, part of that decision. And that's certainly worth reading and highlighting uh, what are quite obviously the key phrases there. Indirect effect, 
where you read the national legislation to give effect to the uh, European law, which can be done as long as you don't have to do violence to the language. So you can't add the word not or try and read 12 months where six months is in the European uh, statute uh, legislation. State liability. Frankovic sets out the principle, principle but it's amended by uh, Brasserie de Pescher and um, sometimes that's referred to as uh, uh, factitae and factitami. Um, do make sure you recognise the number of factitami cases that there, there were. Then we moved on to the area that you're going to be dealing with uh, shortly and it's important to recognise the levels of integration. Um, the first being a free trade area where the members of the free trade area trade between them not being subject to uh, customs duties. The danger with that is something called trade deflection where if uh, country A has high tariffs and uh, com country B has low tariffs, you'll find that uh, those trying to export into that market will send everything towards B, where, where there's uh, low tariff. B, of course, has been very happy about that. Uh, it didn't have much uh, of customs duties, but it'll be getting all of the uh, income from it. And company A, who will have high tariffs, but of course, trade will be diverted. So there are limits to what you can do with that. It's, it's necessarily complicated because you need to have quite detailed country of origin rules. So the next level, the second, is the customs union where all countries within it have a common external tariff and uh, so it doesn't matter where the goods come in. But that's only partial integration. The third is a common market where the factors of production can move freely around and of course of greatest importance are the freedom of movement of workers and the uh, freedom of capital and of course within the common market there's free movement of goods and that allows uh, a continent like Europe which previously had been divided into lots of little markets each of them having their own industries who are competing with each other to have uh, one market that could compete with the United States which of course can deal on a uh, continental basis. You'll come across two terms, the common market which was the term originally used and the thinking was that take the barriers down and uh, the objectives will be achieved. But of course member states are ingenious in coming up with ways of uh, trying to stop that free movement of goods for their own purposes. And uh, what you get in the 1980s is a feeling that the common market hasn't been fully achieved. So it's relaunched under the title the single market. But the single market really is about finishing off uh, the uh, common market. And the final level of integration is the economic union, uh, which we saw in the 1990s and the Treaty of Maastricht. The history of integration in Europe worth looking over, making sure that you're aware of the key dates and the key developments in that process of integration. The topics that uh, you'll be looking at in detail are free movement of goods. Article 28 deals with customs union, so you need to be aware of it but it's not particularly important. Uh, the ones that are, are Articles 34 and 35, uh, which put a ban on quantitative restrictions and measures having equivalent effect uh, to quantitative restrictions, and then uh, Article 36, which derogations. This you need to know in detail, and I've uh, sent out a copy of uh, a flow diagram that you can use to tackle any problem question on free movement of goods. Key definitions, quantitative restrictions are any restrictions which relate to a quantity. So the, num the amount of weight that can come in, in terms of tons, the uh, monetary value, the number of goods, and of course the most important quantitative uh, value is zero, and that is a ban on goods. 
MEQRs more complicated and this is where you need to get to know your cases. Dassonville and the Dassonville formula is essential and the two principles of Cassis de Dijon, uh, the rule of reason and uh, the rule of mutual recognition. You've got them in your textbooks. I would certainly encourage you to uh, highlight the key phrases. The Dassonville formula, you'll see it uh, uh, in there. Make sure that you know the, the wording of it because it is so central. Cassis de Dijon, by looking at uh, your textbooks, again, you'll be able to identify where those two rules are actually set out. The other case is uh, Keck, which deals with selling arrangements. But as I say, use the diagram that I've sent you. If you aren't one of my um, Birmingham students, then email me on jdavidmorgan at googlemail.com and I'll send you a copy of that uh, diagram. You'll also be moving on to social policy and the key questions to be asking is why do we have social policy? And it's not about uh, being nice and fair and uh, uh, willy and friendly. It's about competition. It's making sure that uh, uh, all countries are on a level playing field so that one country, by deciding to pay its, uh, its women half the wage uh, that it pays its men, doesn't get competitive advantage. Look at working conditions in um, 22b and have a look at the details of equal pay and treatment uh, for men and women in uh, 23. On to TMA 04, it's a research exercise. Um, the key point of it is to get you used to doing research on European legislation. Uh, so you're expected to give some details of your search strategies. I would urge you to make those as full as possible, not just for the uh, TMA itself, but for your information. Uh, it's very easy to get into the position where every time you do a bit of research, you start reinventing the wheel. Make a note of your search strategies. And of course, then you're able to build on them and work out what works best for you. Uh, different people find different databases easier to use. Uh, you'll find that each database has its own little quirks and the more you get used to those and uh, uh, note them down, the easier it becomes to, uh, to research. So some of the information is purely factual once you've uh, worked out which the, uh, where the original document is, you're asked for information and provide it. That's nice and straightforward. The second skill that this is developing is the skill of um, condensing that information, a very important um, exam uh, revision skill, and that's why we're getting you to do it. Sometimes it's referred to uh, in English language as praising something. That's what we want you to get you to do. You'll see the arguments and you're asked to praise those, uh, put them in, in a summary form uh, which is reasonable readable. We are not looking for you just to copy them out. That's not going to get anything. We need to see your understanding coming through the way that you've uh, condensed it. Um, so that's what TMA 04 is about. Thank you for listening and I look forward to the next tutorial.